A very warm welcome to Our Heritage. I'm Sherwood McCaskey, as always. I'm pleased that you have joined us. The launch of a book is an occasion for celebration. But when that book is written by one of us and it discusses the story of an entrepreneur's passion for service excellence and her work in the transformation of people and organizations in not just one, not just two, but in 19 Caribbean countries, it's more reasons for celebrations. Hmm. On the evening of Saturday, December the 10th, 2022, Barbadian May Hines launched her book at the Island Inn Hotel, My Tourism Journey, Memoir of a Pioneering Barbadian Entrepreneur. On that occasion, my colleague, accomplished Caribbean journalist, political management and strategic communication specialist Rudon Eversley performed the role of Master of Ceremonies. Over to you, my brother. Thank you. Mr. Michael King is a former Barbados ambassador, permanent secretary, and country representative of the Organization of American States. When he was director of the OS office in the Bahamas, he had the opportunity to work with me on a project. He's here to share his recollections. May's contribution, not only to Barbados, but the Caribbean, has left an indelible mark in the area of training and management of small hotels. I encountered May in the Bahamas, in Nassau, in 1992. And I think I could still find a photograph at home with Vincent Borrell and Danielle Knowles who was an official in the Ministry of Tourism of the Bahamas, and her family owned a small hotel, I remember very well, and May was the go-to person who came up to Nassau and taught many people how they shall manage their small properties. And that's a sector, tourism in Barbados and the Caribbean, that has been neglected. Most people like massive infrastructure, big buildings, and high-end projects and so forth. But they're the people who invested their little earnings and their little capital in making tourism work in the Caribbean because invariably they were able to sustain a long tradition of excellence and service and keeping the tourism model in Barbados and the Caribbean somewhat indigenous in, 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 in key areas. I think her understanding to um, push the need for um, institutional and human capacity building, building among small hotels in Barbados is well documented in the book. And I must say that at every turn in reading this book, one will see that she focused on the basics all the time. And if you look at the 12 takeaway points that she left, uh, she wrote at the end of the book. It will tell us what drove her in her quest for, ex quest for excellence and which caused her to reap great success. She has been able to document and record her experiences in a way that simplifies making common sense decisions without gimmickry and without idle promises. And I think the fact that she served so long in that capacity in the Caribbean was testament to the qualities of as a person and her love and commitment to the cause of tourism development and training in the Caribbean and Barbados. I remember my primary school teacher, who happened to be my godmother, telling me very, at a very young age that success lies not in doing what one likes, but in liking what one does. And I think that my journey, my tourism journey, a memoir of a pioneering Barbadian entrepreneur, clearly reflects the love that May Hines had for tourism and tourism management. And I recommend that you all buy a copy of the book 
read it, make gifts of it, and as I finish my few minutes in my reflections of my Ms. Um, encounters with me as a professional, as a friend, I wish you well and congratulate you on an outstanding documentation of your work in the area of tourism in Barbados and the Caribbean. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Belize is the only English-speaking country in Central America. Though it is continental, it considers itself very much a part of the Caribbean. In fact, it is a member of CARICOM. Belize is also a rapidly growing tourist destination. Um, I was doing some research online, and um, they said considerable growth was achieved in the last few years. So much so that the industry is now the country's second largest. Since his election two years ago, the Honorable Anthony Maller has taken responsibility for charting the direction of the industry as Minister of Tourism. To deliver the feature address, please give a warm Bayesian welcome to the Honorable Anthony Maller, Minister of Tourism and Diaspora Relations in the Government of Belize. It is indeed an honor and a pleasure for me to be here in Bridgetown, Barbados, to share in such a momentous occasion. Tonight is a celebration of a life's work in tourism, and by extension, the development of the Caribbean by an extraordinary human being. Today is a celebration for a truly remarkable Caribbean woman who has been blazing trails in tourism and the services sector for close to 50 years now. She has trained, mentored, assisted many individuals across the Caribbean on what it takes to excel at all levels and at all times. Ms. May, on behalf of Melissa and my family and the country of Belize, congratulations to you on the launch of your book, My Tourism Journey, Memoir of a Pioneering Barbadian Entrepreneur. You said first book, so I, I believe you want to publish a few more. <laughs> Joanne says stress. <laughs> I am proud to say that I know you and that I have learned from you. I'm also glad that I'm able to be here today with your family and friends to celebrate your contribution to tourism and hospitality development in the Caribbean for the past five decades. I met Ms. May in 1998 when she was working with Belize and other Caribbean countries on an OAS program for small hotels as a regional project coordinator. I will never forget that program as it was my first professional experience in the tourism industry, which then led me to become the product development director at the Belize Tourism Board many years ago. The project was developed to assist small local entrepreneurs in improving their operations. It involved all 14 OAS member states and 1,200 small hotels across the region comprising of over 16,000 rooms. Today, just like back in 1998, Belize's accommodation sector is comprised primarily of small hotels with an average of 10 rooms per property. Even today, about 80% of the accommodation sector in Belize is under 20 rooms. So I, re I remain very conscious of the importance and relevance of supporting our small hotels. I must say that my work experience under Ms. May's leadership form a part of my foundation and influence my long-term perspectives and views of the tourism industry, of being a professional and just life in general. As a young professional, Ms. May's guidance definitely impacted my career development, leading to my, career, my current role, Belize's Minister of Tourism and Diaspora Relations. Ms. May leads by example, and from day one, I saw her true passion and love for the tourism industry 
and our commitment to excellence. Please give her a round of applause, I think. She was and still is a consummate professional. Ms. May works with a laser beam focus and with a level of meticulousness only rivaled by my wife, <laughs> <laughs> who is a UE trained attorney and who claims to have all, or a mild case of OCD. <laughs> Ms. May is an advocate for Barbados, the Caribbean, and all our people. I have known Ms. May for about 25 years, and during that time, we've had conversations about who we are as individuals, what moors us, and who has helped along the way to mold us. Well, it is clear in the acknowledgments of the book that her mother, Miss Annie Gertrude Aline, who lived to be almost 100 years old, and who was a tourism pioneer in Barbados as well, helped to mold Miss May. The book says, this fiercely independent woman who has an unmistakable flair for fashion <laughs> taught me at a tender age to think outside the box, to be always true to myself, to show respect for everyone, that is true, but I'm gonna get on twisted because she can't tell you what's on her mind and to stand up for what I believe in. I highlighted these words in the book because they're true, they truly encapsulate Ms. May Hines. <clears throat> Tourism impacts our region significantly and can bring our people out of poverty, create tremendous opportunities, and enable higher standards of living. However, the key, and the key is to strike a delicate balance between economic growth, social development, cultural um, perseveration, perseveration, and environmental stewardship. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate the island of Barbados on the significant work it is doing to rebound after the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the next person I'm going to bring to the podium needs little introduction. You have known her as she served for the past four decades as a consultant and in other roles helping to build tourism success, not only here in Barbados, but in 19 countries across the Caribbean. She's the star attraction tonight, the person whom we are celebrating, the author of My Tourism Journey, memoir of a pioneering Caribbean entrepreneur. I ask you to please welcome Ms. May Heinz. This book is the story of triumph over setbacks. The story of a journey anchored in a deep inner faith, knowing that God was accompanying me and that with him as my guide and also confidence in my abilities, I would eventually win. This evening, therefore, is about more than the launch of a book. It's a celebration of what I have been able to accomplish, particularly the fact that after four decades, I am still standing. The quote, the title of Elton John hit song. Why you all look so stiff though? <laughs> uh, we the Caribbean, right? Yeah, man, all right. This book launch coincides with the 50th anniversary of my graduation in the first cohort of the Barbados Hotel School. Michael talked about that. Two days after the day to be exact. It also coincides with the 70th anniversary of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association. And right, I heard last night, went real well. Congrats, yeah. Now the BHTA is this island's main private sector tourism entity with which I have had a close association. Quite significantly too, it occurs exactly on what would have been the 120th birthday of one of the four strong women who shaped my life and who you'll read about in the book. I speak of none other than Mary Edwardina Jackman, whom we affectionately call Jack Jack. 
She, along with the other three, including my late mother, is frequently mentioned in the book. Thanks, Gloria, for the reminder of the significance of December 10th, Jack Jack's birthday. My interest in pursuing a career in tourism and hospitality was sparked in the late 1960s. It was a result of a conversation I overheard one evening while visiting the Black Rock home of another aunt, Annie Augusta Jones. We affectionately call her Tanti. That evening, she was entertaining two prominent Barbadian personalities who were her neighbors. The then Prime Minister, and now the right excellent Errol Walton Barrow and his wife Carolyn. While they were chatting at the dinner table, I was in the nearby living room. In keeping with the custom at the time, children were kept out of big people's business. However, I could clearly hear what was being discussed. I listened intently as Mr. Barrow passionately outlined his development plans for our newly independent island. What he had to say about tourism and the central role it would play immediately captured my attention and interest. I was then deputy head girl of the Alexandra School looking to graduate in another year and contemplating a career options. Mr. Barrow was so passionate in presenting his vision for the industry that I was convinced it was the path for me to pursue as it represented the future. It led to my enrollment two years later in the first batch of students who entered the then Barbados Hotel School. I graduated years later with a diploma in hotel manage, middle management with credit. When I revealed my intention, my career choice immediately encountered some opposition. Some persons, including relatives, thought I was crazy and tried to discourage me. As they saw it, working in tourism was not for a bright Alexander girl like me, a traditional career like nursing, banking, teaching, or in the civil service was considered more respectable and appropriate. I was even told in one instance that I would only go as far as being a hotel receptionist. Such was the myopia which then prevailed. The course of history, however, proved them wrong. Tourism soon took off, soared, and is today the leading economic driver in most Caribbean countries. It has replaced traditional industries like sugar, in our case, and also bananas, which are almost gone. The past 50 years in tourism has therefore been a satisfying and exciting journey for me. I was an eyewitness and an active participant in a period of fundamental change here in Barbados and our region. I give God thanks and to everyone who helped me along the journey as I reflect on that life-changing evening at Tanti's home. The transformational leader Errol Barrow was stands out like a beacon. He not only had a vision, he also understood the mission and how it could be achieved through having the right persons occupying key roles. Mr. Barrow often spoke of a desire to see Barbadians eventually in control of what he used to call the commanding heights of the economy. In the case of tourism, he began the process by preparing Barbadians to assume middle management positions as the first step towards reaching the top. Mr. Barra was quite strategic in his approach. 50 years on, I am disappointed that not enough progress has been achieved in this regard. There are lots of highly trained and skilled Barbadians on the labor market. Barbadians capable of leading tourism enterprises anywhere in the world. Yet from time to time, we see advertisements in the press we speak of an inability by some tourism employers to find suitably qualified Barbadians to fill top management positions. We have said for years that tourism is our business. Let's play our part. We must be more mindful of the silent message being repeatedly sent to bright and talented Barbadians. This certainly would not happen on such a scale in some neighboring destinations in Jamaica, for example. Tapping indigenous talent as much as possible has been a key ingredient in their tourism success. Correct, Carol Guntley? Mm-hmm. Y'all can't see it, but she's telling me she's nodding, right. Um, we can certainly do better. 
Barbados has been in the tourism business now for more than 50 years. We are considered a mature destination. From time to time, during the course of a journey, it is necessary to pause, reflect, and engage in a strategic refocus. I have had to do so a few times along my journey. I think such an exercise is now badly needed if Destination Barbados is to, re is to reap continued success going forward. There's a need to refresh the industry to place it on a more modern footing. It is important in such an exercise that the Ministry of Tourism is reorganized to strengthen its role as a national policy maker. It needs to be seen again in a more assertive leadership role driving the industry. It often appears as if the BTMI, which is subordinate to the ministry, is in the driver's seat. Yet a humble suggestion based on observations from quite a few industry watchers. Friends and colleagues, writing a memoir can be just a daunting undertaking. It took me five years putting it down, going back to it. The last chapter was written in my friend's The White's Home in Canada about two years ago. But completing and publishing, um, you know, there, it, it, I guess it's, a, it's a, an achievement worth celebrating as we are this evening. I've always had a desire to share my story so that others, especially those on a similar path, can take away something from my experience, however small it may be. Why do I consider this important? Because the wisdom of the book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible reminds us, and I quote, what has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. By sharing our experiences with those coming after us, we can empower them and help them to avoid some of the pitfalls we encountered on our journey. Life on this earth is similar to a never-ending relay race in which the baton is continuously passed from one generation to the next. There are many of you in this audience with inspiring stories to tell, not only about your career journey, but also life experiences. They could very well be a source of encouragement for someone out there on a similar journey, and you're in for success. Instead of taking your story to the grave, as so many in our region have done, I want to encourage you to write, publish, and share your story. I have done it, and so can you. Now you may ask how to begin. My first challenge was acknowledging and recognizing the limitations of my skills as a writer. Many of you are probably in the same boat. I therefore had to find someone with first-class writing and editing expertise. Fortunately for me, I knew someone who perfectly fitted the description, and he readily offered to help. In fact, he was the one who, on discovering my story, encouraged me to write. That person is my good friend, Rudon Eversley. See this gentleman here? Please recognize him. <laughs> Benefin, benefiting from Rudon's guidance and expertise throughout this project made the task easy, straightforward, and enjoyable. Drawn on his media and communication training and decades of experience as a journalist, newsroom executive, and strategic communication advisor, Rodon made producing this book seem so simple. I provided the raw material. He did the rewriting, the editing, providing the structure, and recommended the title. Dr. Stacy Denny, who I believe is viewing, hello Stacy, did the proofreading. When I submitted a completed manuscript to Miller Publishing, where is Keith Miller? <laughs> Keith said it was one of the best he had received in his years in the business. Right, Keith? Right. Did we quote you correctly? Absolutely. Lovely. So much so that hardly any corrections were necessary, and Keith asked if he could use the manuscript as a best-case example in one of his workshops for aspiring writers. So, Rudon, I'm greatly indebted to you, as well as to Miller Publishing, especially young Erin Brewster. Where is Erin? Right, back there somewhere, right. Who did the layout and design? And of course, the accomplished Mark Maynard. Where's Mark Maynard? Right, my cousin. Um, and Mark, of course, designed the cover. Together, you have delivered a work of excellence. In closing, I give God thanks for this special moment, which I will forever cherish. And I simply wish to say to everyone, every one of you, everybody in this room is special, clients, friends, relatives, colleagues, service providers. Thank you, thank you, and again, thank you.
that's it, people. <laughs> On page 122 of her book, in a chapter titled, A Final Word, she wrote, and I quote, hmm, We are human, and imperfection is a defining human characteristic. Nevertheless, we strive in all we do to be the best we can be for ourselves, our families, our communities, and our country. Despite our differences, we should be united by this common aspiration. I am confident that we can do it. There is more that unites us as the people of this region than what divides us. Hmm. We can accomplish so much more for this region if we start by believing that we can. Interestingly enough, May Hines' final words in her book remind us of the words of Calypsonian Black Stalin who passed away just recently. So we must push one common intention is for a better life in the region for we women and we children. That must be the ambition of the Caribbean man, the Caribbean man, the Caribbean man. May Hines has contributed to knowledge generation and uh, her story is now part of the intangible heritage of Barbados and the world. I have my copy. Happy reading. <laughs>